Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Carl Bailey and welcome to our first dev diary for the game we are busy working on. So far we've chosen to call the game, well, we've chosen to call it either Brink of Extinction or The Remainder, we're a bit torn about names at the moment. Um, before we show you what we have so far, I'll give you some quick context to the game, um, what the gameplay is like, uh, what genre the game fits into and where we are planning on taking the game to. Um, so basically we are making a third person post-apocalyptic survival arcade shooter set in an open world based on the city of Cape Town in South Africa, which is pretty much where we're from. Um, while we are aware that there are already a lot of popular survival games out there, we feel that some of them take the real life simulation too far, making the gameplay become tedious and eventually quite irritating. Uh, we're going to avoid the nitty grittiness of campfires, um, opening canned food, spoiling food, that sort of thing. Um, they're cool at first, but you know it loses its flavor after time. That being said, there are also a lot of games out there with the same idea of arcade PvP in an open post-apocalyptic world. But after having sampled a few of them ourselves, we found them to have a number of issues. Um, things like they were extremely buggy, almost unplayable to a certain extent. Uh, they had far too many pay-to-win aspects. Uh, they lacked proper PvE aspects and content and were overrun with hackers. We are trying to rectify these issues with our game designed in uh, Unreal Engine 4. To give you an idea of the context, the game is set in 2045, 25 years after a mutation of the Ebola virus caused people to bleed out internally within minutes and caused their bodies to be reanimated after their deaths. The mutation spread like wildfire, transmittable through air, water, and even insects and animals, until within a matter of weeks, everyone in the planet had been exposed. Of the 7 billion humans on Earth, a small percentage had a built-in inexplicable immunity to the virus and were able to survive the initial years of suffering it wrought. Now, 25 years later, the world's resources are scarce, and the remaining few must fight each other and the reanimated dead to delay the inevitable end to mankind. The choice to take a life is in your hands. Okay, so let me show you a little of what we've got right now um, on our test level, and then I'll show you a much larger level that we're busy working on putting together. And finally, I'll give you some info about where the game is going. Um, so let's load into the test level, and before we even move, let's take a look at the HUD. In the bottom left, you'll notice some progress bars for the traditional status effect system. That's health, stamina, hunger, thirst. Uh, this is only a placeholder for now. We will be refining the whole HUD system and everything a little bit further down the line. You'll also notice that there are three blocks above the status effect system. These are the indicators for when you are bleeding uh, and or approaching imminent starvation or dehydration. Uh, next up is the skill point system um, in the top left hand corner. You can earn experience by killing other players and zombies in our game and spend your experience on stat modifiers up to a maximum level of course. So if you take a look now I'm just basically simulating in the top in the middle um, the increase of your experience. So at this point we are now level 0 and now we're level 1. So we've earned a skill point essentially and this can be spent on one of the six stat modifiers on the side here. We're, we're missing one at the moment we still need to add it in. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and spend mine on the Vitality st stat modifier, which gives me one plus one percent max health. So yeah, this this uh, system is basically complete. There's a couple more networking things we need to get done on that side though. Um, let me show you now the scoreboard. We've got a simple scoreboard. Um, uh, and this is related to a reputation system which we've implemented um, and the reputation system is that all players will start on a certain rank um, be it a civilian or a citizen something kind of very generic like that and as you kill people whether they be good or bad you earn reputation and uh, you can ascend into the upper echelon of good or bad um, which culminates in a, a superhero on the good side and a supervillain on the evil side. So next up let me introduce you to the inventory system uh, or at least <laughs> the partially working inventory system. In the bottom in the middle you'll notice our quick slots which are linked to the backpack uh, which you can now see on your right. These blocks represent the primary and secondary weapons as well as the armor slots. So those top four big slots on the right hand side they are for primary, secondary and armor. The remainder of the slots, uh, which will 
be dependent on the backpack that you are wearing. Uh, is really just for storage within the backpack. Okay, so if I move over to the cylinders, um, you'll see a pop-up that pops up with the name of the item, in this case, uh, canned beans. And I'm just going to pick these items up. Uh, there's a bit of a delay that we've built in for that. Um, and if you pick them up, you'll see that their images get posted to the backpack system. Um, and you can, if you click on them, there's basically an action menu drop-down where you can cancel, drop, or use the item. So cancel returns it to the backpack system. Drop will spawn the item in front of you in the world. And you can use the item. In this case, you can eat it. Um, yeah, so that's what we've got. There's a lot of refinement to go into the inventory system. Um, so hopefully we'll show you some more on that in the forthcoming dev diaries. Um, then let me give you an idea of the animations at the moment. Um, we've worked quite hard on these. We've, we've used uh, Kubalt's rifle anim set pack and we'll be using his movement pack as well. Um, we've got some crouching and jumping and running and those sorts of things. And blend spaces between them, those sorts of things. Uh, there's a lot of work to go into it. Uh, we feel like the animations are a pretty important part of the gameplay. So we're going to give a lot of effort and put a lot of effort into those. Uh, then let me get to some of the slightly cooler stuff. Um, one of the co-developers, is he's been making models for us, guns and uh, med items, and he's been working on the uh, main map layout and those sorts of things. Uh, so over here, we've got an intervention rifle. Uh, so if I'll just pick that up, I'll give you an idea of kind of like the shooting. Um, and, uh, yep. So very cool, very loud. Over here we've got an Emi Tavor 21, which is also modeled. Um, just also placeholder shooting, those sorts of things, placeholder sounds. Yeah, we've got a free asset from the Unity store. Um, and same thing with the AK-47. Yeah. Um, so I think now I will show you... Let me show you the main map layout. So let me just load into that. So uh, I've loaded into the uh, main map that we've been working on. Um, let's do a quick walkthrough, um, really just to kind of give you an idea of the scale of the map, um, how we're kind of layering it out. Uh, it's going to be very focused on uh, on PvP, of course, RK PvP shooter that we're making, um, but it's going to be a blend of both rural and urban kind of fighting. So the guy who's been uh, modeling for us, he, this is kind of what he's been working on. At the moment, this house over here is actually a, a replica of the house he lives in, which is still obviously very much a work in progress. Um, some road with uh, textures, and up here we've got a street pole. Um, we're walking up now to a mart, uh, which will have a parking lot out in front of it and that sort of thing. We've got some uh, drainage things for the pavement. Um, the plan at the moment is basically we're going to have a park somewhere around here, some mountains around and in the distance, the ocean somewhere around in the distance, some bridges, a highway, that kind of thing. That's all pretty much to come. Uh, in the distance you can see this this first building that's closest to us. That's going to be a hospital. Um, and the even bigger one is a block of flats over there. And we're going to have a quite a large number of or large variety of different houses around and that kind of thing. So we think it's going to make for quite a dynamic PvP environment, you know, give you a lot of different places to play um, and a lot of new and different things to experience as you play. Okay, so what's next? Well, for now we're going to continue working on the animations, improving them, adding the prone, uh, adding blend spaces between a lot of the animations. Uh, we'll be doing some art creation that will be helpful for down the line when we start uh, kicking off our marketing and advertising campaign. Um, we'll be modeling more items that you can pick up for the inventory system and this includes the creation of a medding system. Uh, we'll be adding a chat system, refining the current inventory system. Uh, we'll be inputting sounds, so this will be things like the ambient noise, um, gun sounds, character sounds, um, zombie sounds. Uh, sounds depending on what material you're walking on, those sorts of things. We'll be refining the zombies that we have. Uh, I haven't gotten around to showing those to you, but you can find a link in the description um, to the, that will show you what zombies we have at the moment. Um, we'll be creating additional character models, both male and female, and creating a variety of different skins for both. And we will continue to work on the main map layout that I showed you, getting that up to scratch for our pre-alpha. Then, uh, the future plans for the game are basically we will be sticking the game up on Kickstarter with a funding goal that we have yet to be determined. 
Uh, we're aiming to have the game in a pre-alpha state by the end of July um, and have the game up on Kickstarter by the end of August of this year. Uh, if we achieve the funding goal, we'll be working on the game full-time from that point onwards, um, working to get the game greenlit for Steam by the end of the first quarter 2016 at the absolute latest. So that pretty much concludes the first dev diary um, and the introduction to our game. In the description you'll see two links to other videos of our games. These were very early tests of animations and shooting and the zombies. Um, yeah, so if you have any questions or suggestions, please comment them on the video. Cheers.